Welcome to Morgan's video blog, Morgan's online blog in video format. Today I'm here to talk to you about second book problems. I know my novel is as of yet unpublished, but that doesn't mean it's too early to start studying out for the future and the problems I hope to conquer. I write fantasy and if you read fantasy novels, you've probably noticed a trend actually in any genre of fiction. Books rarely stand alone, unlike the cheese. That doesn't mean that the story isn't self-contained, but often there are overlaying arcs and themes that are worked towards, independently of the novel's own internal story arc. There are a lot of things to think about before starting book two. If you'd like to avoid second book problems, there's only one way to do it. Refuse to write them. But for the rest of us, there are some questions we need to ask. First off, when do we start plotting the sequel? Is it too late? Should I have started when I was five? Do I wait till I'm done? Who knows? Well, the answer, of course, as with all things writing related, you have options. There are three main approaches. First is to plot and outline everything, but remember, they say no plan survives the first encounter with the enemy or the blank page. Look at your plans and outlines more as guidelines than rules. Another approach is to have a definite beginning and a definite end point you're working towards and figure you'll just fill in the fuzzy middle as you go along. And of course, the third approach is for you pantsers out there. Some people like to just follow the story and see where it goes, flying by the seat of their pants. So you've decided to write the sequel. Should you change points of view? In some genres like romance, it's often expected. You typically branch off and pair up all the friends of the brides and the grooms. It can be done well. Personally, I would suggest if your first book was single point of view, don't add more than two new points of view. And no matter your point of view or points of view, you need to grant some continuity. Um, three ways to do that are keep at least one main character from the first book to the second book, or have the main characters of the second book be the tertiary characters from the first book, like in romance. The third option is to have the new main characters as either ancestors or descendants of the main characters from the first book. That way you have a family line and there's already some emotional investment on behalf of the reader. So now that you know who's telling your story, how much should you reintroduce? You want new readers to know enough about what's going on. You want old readers tactfully reminded of what happened in the previous books and you want readers speeding through the series not to get bored. It's a tough tightrope to walk. So as always with background information, an eyedropper is better than a dump truck. A couple techniques you could try. Flashbacks to a previous book also means you don't have to write as much. Or you could write a prologue or scenes replayed but have them from a new character's point of view to make them different and give them a new twist. Giving too much information at the beginning of a story is standard error. It's found everywhere, says Joe Lindsay Walton. Bad books are often not a bad read if you start in the middle. So now you've given your expose, you've reintroduced your characters and you're shoving through the story you're probably going to run into problems with canon. When you're writing a sequel, especially if you hadn't expected to write it or it took a new twist, you may find yourself painted into a corner. You may have missed the opportunity to foreshadow someone turning into a bad guy. The new story arc may have been supposed to be underlain in the old one, but not really set up properly or you've given the characters traits that are now plot stumbling blocks. But you can also find the limitations of the story 
give you direction to write in that you may have floundered at. So one of the fun questions to ask yourself when starting a series is when to start thinking about series theme titles. The time to decide on a series title is just about the time you're ready to publish book one. If you have any notion of playing in that same world again, don't worry about it before you have a final title for your first novel. If you don't have a novel, you don't need a series title. And remember, the series title has to be strong. A Song of Ice and Fire, while whimsical and hints at later plot developments, never caught on as strongly as Game of Thrones. The title names that you come up with and series names can be themed, alliterative, story or plot derived, etc. Whatever you or the publisher thinks will sell. Don't get wedded on something just because it's poetic or it's clever. Go for something that sells because it doesn't matter how awesome it is if you don't have an audience. So here's a problem that I dream of having. What do you do when you never intended to write a sequel, but the reader demand is so strong and the publisher is asking for it? Well, it would be nice if you'd brainstormed when you're writing your novel new directions to go, but even if you haven't, you should always leave threads open. Life isn't nice and neat. You shouldn't have everything wrapped up with a bow by the time this reader hits the words, the end. Are there things that the main character wanted or needed to do next? Bam, there's your sequel. Are there things that the secondary characters needed to do or do they just plain deserve their own book? Bam, spinoff. Would a prequel novel make sense? If you're really hurting for ideas, maybe a generation skip ahead novel would make sense. So these are all great things to think about when working on book two, but do you know what the hardest part is? Hands down, making the story's plot an emotional arc strong enough to stand alone. You still need an inciting incident. You still need struggles and nearly unsurmountable odds. You still need that false victory and that crushing blow, that snatching defeat from the jaws of victory that makes the main character and the reader feel that hope might be lost. And you still need that climax that restores that hope and grants a sense of accomplishment. Plus, even if there's a sequel coming, you still need a denouement, the falling action that grants the character a chance to take a deep breath, reassess, and make plans. If you're working on your sequel, best of luck. If you're dreaming about the day when it's your turn, the best way to make that happen is to finish book one. These notes are taken from the titular panel. The panelists were Annie Ballet, Joe Lindsay Walton, Katri Alatas, and Laura Lam. The panel was moderated by NS Dolkart at Worldcon 75. Thank you for tuning in and I'll see you next week.